Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to build the unusual and unique kit of the TACOM 144 scale German Rat. Uh, this was a fictional vehicle and was only a, a 1946 what if type project. Uh, it was going to be an absolute massive land battleship uh, built by the Germans. It was going to be powered by U-boat engines and if you look on top here, this is the turret off of like a German heavy cruiser. So it was going to have 11 inch guns minus the center gun, it was just going to have the two outer guns there. Just going to be a beast of a vehicle, in fact if you look at the pictures right here, this is the 100 ton mouse that uh, the Germans had actually built a couple of, so they were getting that into uh, combat. So you see all the, we'll call them mice, out here in front, and they even show, because it's a 46 project, the UFOs, that like just like the one we built uh, a while back, uh, floating around in the background there. So it's going to be an unusual kit. I've looked at the part count. Uh, part count's very, very small on this kit, so it should go together really quickly, and we can get to painting, and they've offered up uh, quite a few different types of paint jobs, so we should have some fun with that. Uh, another thing I also want to talk to you about, um, as I was just about to start to film this, uh, I just broke 30,000 subscribers on the, uh, the channel today, so very excited about that, uh, very humbled by it that that many of you guys out there like the channel enough to subscribe and watch all of our videos. It's great to have you on board. Um, it inspires me to build more and more model kits too, so to keep, to keep you guys entertained. Uh, and. Uh, 2017 is going to be a great year. There's so many new kits coming out that we're just going to keep keep knocking them out, uh, and hopefully you enjoy the video. So, enough talking. Let's get started on the build. Okay, uh, we're just about to begin construction on the kit, but before I did that, I kind of wanted to show you a size comparison of the uh, the vehicle. Now, this model kit is built in 144 scale, so it's quite a bit smaller scale than what we're used to working in, like in the say the 35th scale, which is this Tiger One. Um, and as you can see, even though it's a much smaller scale, this vehicle is much much larger, even in the smaller scale for it. And it's but yeah, I just wanted to show you overall size. Also in the kit, they give you two 144 scale mouse kits. And this was going to be the 100 ton kit. Now, I've just glued it together quickly. I haven't done any sanding or anything else on it yet. But I wanted just to show you the overall size. Uh, I mean, it's not even as large as the turret. Uh, of this vehicle. It's just going to be a massive vehicle. So it's kind of cool to get two little ones like this we'll put around it. And then also we can even have our uh, uh, UFO flying over in the background. It's a little bit out of scale, but still it'll look kind of cool together. So now that we've got that on there, we're going to jump right into the construction of the kit. And the first thing they want you to do are glue up the wheels. And as you can see, the wheels are done. I just cut these off the sprue just now. They're all molded together as big, big chunks which makes it a lot lot easier if we're going to put this together and honestly I know some people complain that all oh, the details not going to be in it I actually prefer this if it's going to do it this way because none of this is going to get seen this is all just filler on the inside they're going to you're going to glue these three pieces together and then there are going to be a bunch of outer road wheels that we will put on um, that you know that have all the detail on it so there are still quite a bit of detail parts but this is just a great way to uh, put it together so we have a nice uh, nice solid surface plus everything's gonna lay flat on the ground when we get it done and honestly if you're not gonna see in the inside uh, it's not gonna be a big deal so so let's start on the construction okay I have all the uh, the parts laid out to do the first side of the suspension uh, and this kit is not a ton of parts, so it should go together pretty quickly and easily. Uh, there are, each side of the suspension is side specific, so, uh, but it's very easy to see because one side goes up, the other side doesn't go up as much for the, like, the drive sprocket. So we're going to slowly but surely start putting all of these pieces together. Uh, only a couple connection points for the gluing, so it shouldn't take us that long. One quick little thing in these instructions, the outer road wheel or the drive sprocket and the uh, return roller on the back uh, use the same piece. Uh, it doesn't show it in the instructions putting it on in, on the uh, on the back side here, but they do give you the extra pieces, so I'm assuming that's how it's going to go on it. And based on the picture, uh, I think that's what will be correct as well. 
Okay, we've let this set up uh, for about maybe 15, 20 minutes just so it has a nice, uh, nice firm uh, feel to it. Uh, these are kind of flexible because there's such a small amount of connection points that you just want to make sure they all line up perfectly while the glue is setting up. So with that, uh, we're going to just go ahead and start gluing on the outer road wheels. And the most time-consuming portion of this part of the build was just sanding all of these little road wheels because there is quite a few of them just for the outer appearances on it. But I think it's going to give it a nice, uh, nice look to it. So, and then remembering what I said earlier about putting the uh, drive sprocket and the return roller. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these road wheels on both sides and we'll come back and show you how the tracks go together. Okay, now that we have the uh, wheel assemblies all set up and dry, I'm just going to quickly show you the track formation. Uh, the track is made up into a lot of length pieces that are already preformed. This one's got the slot cut out of it, obviously, so you can just click it into place so it'll fit underneath that. Uh, another tip, too, is there's four different pieces of length track that are the smaller pieces that I just numbered each one individually. It's going to be hidden by the wheels once we put it on, but it'll just make assembly go a lot quicker for you. And it's just a matter of they've got nice pegs and pins and you just glue all these pieces together. There is for the front of the drive, uh, drive sprocket some individual pieces of track made up of seven different pieces and we'll glue those together similarly the way we do all of our individual links. Just lining them all up in a row, brushing the liquid glue, letting them set up for about five minutes just until they get soft enough that they'll but still stay together and then we'll wrap them right around the uh, drive sprocket. Okay, I wanted to give you guys a little builder's tip. In the instructions, they tell you to put the length track, the length track, uh, the length track on the bottom, and then the other length track right here, and then using seven individual tracks, you will wrap around the drive sprocket here. The problem is, once you do it that way, it did not look right at all. It, it was sticking out, it would not line up with the lower road wheel, it was just really, really off. So what I found to do is doing some different type of testing. The best way I worked was to do the length, the length again here, and then five individual tracks wrapped around here, the one piece of length track then, and then one individual track right here in the middle between the two full lengths. And I think that gets the best shape overall because it makes the break of the track going up right at the front road wheel. Uh, whereas before, it would, it would stick out the wrong way. It just looked really weird. But um, so one less track and take that one and one track and put it down here and I think it just turns out much better. Now I'm going to start working on the back and see if we have a similar problem with the tracks going around and I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, a similar situation on the back. Uh, it recalled for eight individual track links. Uh, six is all that was needed to... Uh, to go around pretty pretty tight and have no problems. So between the front and the back, there's three less track links than are needed in the kit build. And uh, if there's any difference on the other side, I'll let you know. But since they are basically the same parts, I don't think there will be. So just keep that in mind going forward as you build the tracks. Okay, the other side of the tracks worked out fine, uh, exactly the same way though with the you know, the extra track pieces. And I've just glued them into place onto the base for now, that was the next step. But uh, next thing I wanna to talk to you about is building the little back turrets that are gonna fit on the back of the, uh, the vehicle back here. A couple of quick things. First of all, the connection point right here is very, very fragile. So you gotta be very careful not to cut too far in because it'll eat into the base here. As well as the, uh, the gun barrels. All of the gun barrels have a slight little warp to them because of the way they're molded onto the sprue. So what I did was I built up one little little piece right here to show you. For the gun barrels, I just went ahead and used some stretch sprue, which is just a matter of taking one of the end pieces and lighting it with a little, with a uh, lighter and letting it get hot enough and then stretching it apart. The gun barrels came out much straighter and were easy to make and just got to keep playing around with it to get the right diameter, you know, of the uh of the sprue. But much, much easier doing it that way. And besides, trying to cut that barrel off and then sanding that little thing would have been a nightmare. So uh, I just have to make one more of these and we'll be done with that portion and I'll put them onto the uh, the base. Okay, the, uh, the rear end section is going to be pretty basic and straightforward. There's not a heck of a lot of parts that go onto it, mainly these big fans. Then the, uh, the two turrets will go on the back here. There's no marks where to exactly set those up, so I guess you gotta kinda have to come up with a, 
place in mind where both of them are going to line up and then there's these panels that will cover up this portion. The only other thing that we have to put on on the top is the uh, the photo etch rail which I've cut out and I've ground off the, the little burr. Hopefully you can see it right there. And this will just lay right into place here. It's got some pilot holes that I was just checking out a little bit. It seemed to line up pretty well. So what I'll do is I'll put the rest of these parts on, glue the ladder, the, excuse me, the uh, handrails into place, and we'll come back and start working on the turret. Thought I would just show you at this point, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. The turret was a grand total of like seven parts and, and super simple to put together. So I just assembled the turret. We glued on all of the, uh, the photo etch railings on both sides. Plus there's some photo etch railings in the back here. Uh, and there's also another gun and some lights up front. Uh, and then after that, what I did is I sprayed it with a coat of uh, black. And this is more or less to see if what you know kind of flaws we have. Also works as good as our shadow coat, of course. But this way we can see if we needed to clean up any areas for the uh, super glue from the uh, from the railings. See, I got most of it off. There was only like a couple little tiny ones that I'm going to go back in and kind of sand around very very gingerly because it's. Uh, very fragile the uh, photo etch so I got to avoid grabbing it by the side I've almost knocked it off twice now so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up cleaning that up and then I'm going to show you guys how we're gonna paint the model also I painted up one of the mouse kits uh, I did a little sanding on it and got that together so that's a real simple kit to do go together as well and I'll build up the other one so we have it for a nice display piece Okay, I uh, haven't really 100% decided at this point what, how I'm going to paint this, but I know that the, the base color of this is going to start off as a dark yellow, so I figure I'm going to go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to slightly lighten it down with a little bit of buff to give it a little bit of a scale effect. don't want the dark yellow to be too strong um, on the vehicle. It's got to look a little bit lighter for the size that it's going to be. So let's go ahead and put that first coat of dark yellow on just the base. The turret I'm going to paint differently, just not sure how I'm going to do it yet. So there's the uh, the dark yellow color that I was talking about. That's our, our good base. And I didn't go super heavy on it, so we still have some light faded areas on it. So we're going to move that out of the way for now, too. And I kind of thought, I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint this like a battleship type gray that the Germans would have had. To kind of, I want to give it some contrast so it's just not all one color. We'll do something kind of crazy maybe with the camouflage on the bottom. But we'll paint this uh, like a battleship gray right now. I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead here. Uh, didn't show you all of the of the painting, but this is the uh, the paint job that I decided on. I wanted something a little bit different that we haven't done before, and I thought this giant geometric shape on such a large vehicle looks kind of cool. Also, in my mind, I'm picturing them trying to paint the real vehicle in just a regular hand applied camouflage. I just didn't seem right. It would be painted more like what a big giant battleship would have been painted. So. Like I said, uh, I like the way it looks like that, and that's the most important person you have to please is yourself when you're building one of these. So it's like I said, it's something different, and I had fun doing it as well. Now, I went back a second time and repainted this, uh, this turret with a little bit of a, more of a blue tone to it, more like a battleship gray that has like the blue tones to it. Not 100% sure if I'm going to keep it that way. Um, a few people that have come in my store while I was building said they, they like it, and I kind of do too. And what I'll probably do is I'm going to go ahead, do some wet, finish the rest of the painting, like of the tracks, things like that. Do some weathering on it and see how it works. Because if it doesn't, if I don't like it, I always can go back over and paint the uh, the the turret to match the rest of the base but I kind of also picture it in the background that if it's up on a hill or on far on the horizon this pattern right here breaks up the uh, silhouette and this kind of blends into the sky kind of like that that grayish blue sky gray so we'll stick with it for now so let's start the weathering process okay uh I've let the uh, obviously the paint dry completely on the vehicle, and I've sprayed the entire model with uh, TS80, which is to me as dull coat spray, uh, completely sealing in our paint job. Now we're going to use a little bit of our panel line accent color black, and we're just going to go along the lines here and highlight some of the parts on the wheel. See if I can keep my hand out of the way of the camera, 
and just doing areas in here makes all the little rivets and things pop out quite a bit and remembering this is enamel uh, enamel paint so if you get it anywhere you don't want we can go back over it with a uh, another clean brush dipped in a little mineral spirits and take it right off so and that's the main reason you go around and seal in and clear coat now we'll also we're also gonna do all of these areas as well these panels hopefully you can watch how it just using the capillary attraction just goes right up the uh, the side of the vehicle and will fill in this you might have to touch it a few times and like I said if you see a little bit extra get on it there we can just take a soft brush and it has a little thinner already on it and just taking off like that just so it doesn't leave any stain left behind on it so I'm gonna go over and touch up all the panel lines and all the wheels and pieces like that with the uh, the black panel wash and we'll come back and show you the next step so we're gonna do some slight amount of a little chipping and scratching and the way we're gonna do that is you may remember a while back we mixed up 70% NATO brown and 30% NATO black to come up with like a, a tarnish color which I think looks really good for scratches and we're gonna do it in a two-part process one part is I've taken a piece of foam sponge and I've cut it kind of to a point and we'll be able to dip just the, the very tip of it into it and kind of blot it on to make a few more minor scratches because we do have to remember that the kit is 144 so the scratches aren't going to be huge. Plus we're going to be taking our flat Tamiya brush and dipping a little bit in the paint and dry brushing just to kind of highlight some of the areas. And I've started to begin up in the front here, which I'll zoom in and let you guys see it. Hopefully you can see just the small amount of scratches and wear that we're going to put on the edge. Like I said, we don't want to go too much because of the size of the vehicle. So I'm going to go over the, uh, the vehicle and start scratching it up a bit. And in this process, I'm basically just, I've, I've taken most of the paint out of the, uh, the brush, but we're just tapping along the edge here and you can see paint get left behind and that's, I think that makes a good scale effect for the size vehicle that this is. What we're going to do now is we're going to put some, some streaks down the side and kind of dirty up the, uh, the vehicle a little bit more. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take our brush dipped in uh, odorless thinner and we're going to put a kind of a liberal coat on the side of the vehicle and this is just going to make the, the wash flow a lot easier down the side. So we'll get this whole thing nice and wet. And it doesn't have to be perfect, we just want it wet so when we put our streaking grime effect on, and now this is an enamel one, and start off by putting a little bit up on the top here. And you can put it on fairly thick because we have the, the wash of uh, thinner on there, gives us a little chance to play around with things. And just taking your brush, you can just start to create some streaks. I won't do all of it right now, I'm just going to show you. Then we take our, our dry brush and just start to pull it down. And we don't want our streaks too, too strong on this because, once again, size of the vehicle. So that gives you a general idea. Now I'm going to have to do a couple times some lighter coats and thin it out. And you just kind of play with around with it until you see what it looks like after it's dried. And you might have to put a second or third coat on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing all the different surfaces with that same streaking effect. And I also might use a touch just a small amount of the light rust as well. And that's kind of an orangish type of grime, so that'll look really good on here too. And it doesn't always look like rush, it sometimes looks like a, like a lighter earth as well mixed with it. So we'll go ahead and see how it looks once we put both of them on. And we're also gonna take a brush with a little bit of our desert dust, and we're gonna go over all the track sections right here. 
And what this will do, this will highlight all of the individual little tracks so that they pop out and looks like there's a fair amount of dirt inside of them. And this is of course going to dry flat and a lot more subdued once it's done. So it'll just make them pop out a little bit better. So here we are, here's our completed model. Uh, after we let the, uh, the wash dry, I sprayed the entire model with a coat of buff, the XF57 from Tamiya. And that kind of softens the paint and kind of blends everything together. We, like I said, we didn't want to go too, too crazy on the weathering because of the size of the vehicle, because it's much larger than a 35th scale. So it's not going to show all of the wear and tear as a regular model should. Um, and as you can see, it's got the little, uh, the little mouse right next to it. I only built up one so far. Uh, a couple of friends are probably going to use something like this in some war gaming. So it's a pretty, pretty nice little interesting kit. Uh, construction wise, very easy to put together. Not many parts at all. It is a little difficult getting this one long photo etch railing on the, both sides of it and then keeping it on after you, once you get it on there because Quite a few times I'd go to pick it up, forget it was there, and partially knock it off. But uh, after a while, you start to figure out where it is. So there it is. So I want to thank you as always for watching, and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming. Well, I had a little bit of a change of heart. Uh, I had the, the video for the rat completely done. It was rendered, ready to go on a flash drive, ready to upload. And I just kept looking at the model and... Just did not like it. Um, I did not like the gray top on it. So what I've done since then is I've taken the uh, the turret off. Uh, we completely painted it with the Mission Models Red Oxide Primer paint, not the actual primer, just the actual paint. So much easier. Then after that, we did a little highlighting with the uh, Tamiya panel line, just to highlight some of the rivets, just lightly. And then I did a little dry brushing with that red brown, and it really I think highlights nicely. The top of the vehicle not too crazy with the uh you know amount of wear because it is the red oxide primer and then after that we just shot a coat of uh, buff coat on it so i'm liking the way the vehicle looks a lot better this way now obviously you've just watched the part with the gray and the reason that is because that part of the video was already rendered and already ready to go so this is just kind of like an add-on to the end of the video so i want to thank you as always uh, for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more models coming don't forget, if you live near the Phoenix, Arizona area, February 25th on a Saturday, we will be holding Canyon State Model Con 2. It'll be great fun for the whole family. There'll be a model swap meet as well as a model contest.